Beardo Benjo. For the past 12 hours, I've been playing around with a VR mod that increases the visual quality and overall performance of almost every single Steam VR game that I've applied it to. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds too good to be true. That sounds like some kind of ridiculous miracle. It can't exist. Well, I'm here to tell you that it does exist and I'm really, really excited about it. Now, please see this video as a first impressions of this mod. I don't think I've spent enough time with it as of yet to do a full breakdown and a full explanation and deep dive into exactly how this works and the best way to get it working. Today, I just wanted to share with you some footage of before and after applying this mod to a handful of Steam VR games because the results I'm encountering are staggering. Now my PC isn't the best PC in the world anymore. It's certainly not top of the range by today's standards, but it isn't a bad PC either. I've got an RTX 2080, an i7 9700K processor and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Now that basically means that I can play any VR game that I want, but some of the newer VR games are becoming a bit of a challenge. I'm noticing I can't run them as smoothly. I'm noticing that when I'm turning quickly in game, I'm getting some hangs, a little bit of ghosting. It doesn't feel like the frame rate is as good as it should be. And it's making for a slightly uncomfortable experience in newer games like Green Hell VR, for example. Cue some Green Hell VR footage running behind me now that is using this mod that I'm about to talk about. This is the best capture of Green Hell VR I have ever achieved. That's the best performance in Green Hell VR I've ever played and experienced myself. This mod makes this game exceptionally playable and it makes it look better than I've ever seen it. Now we're going to take a closer look at this gameplay in a minute and compare it to gameplay I captured without the mod running but while this is going behind me let me just read to you from the github page of this mod exactly what the mod is doing. The mod itself is called the openvr underscore fsr. Now fsr stands for fidelity fx super resolution. This is straight from the github page. Fidelity fx super resolution is an upscaling technique developed by AMD but it works on pretty much any graphics card including Nvidia cards. The idea is that the game internally renders to a lower resolution thus saving GPU time and reaching higher FPS as long as it's not bottlenecked by the CPU. The resulting lower resolution render is then upscaled to the target resolution by fsr with the aim of restoring some of the lost detail due to the lower resolution rendering. So, in layman's terms, what does this mod do? Well, I think it does this. It looks at what you have your Steam VR resolution set to. Whatever you've got the render resolution set to on Steam VR, it takes a look at that. Now, let's say, for example, you set it to 2000 by 2000. The mod will look at that, and then you can configure the mod to drop the resolution to a set increment. By default, I think it's set to 0.75, so 75% of that original resolution. The mod will drop it down, so it drops the 2000 by 2000 to 1500 by 1500. It then uses the FSR, this Fidelity FX super scaling, to push it back to the native resolution, the resolution that you wanted it to hit, the 2000. So your PC, your GPU, your system is only having to render the game at 1500 by 1500 and then the mod, the FSR part of it, pushes it back up, samples it back up and makes it look like it's still running at 2000 by 2000. That is the layman's terms understanding of it in my own brain. Let's take a little look at the performance difference in a handful of games I've tested today and then at the end I'll show you very briefly how to download this thing and get it set up. Now, let me just say one thing before we get into the comparisons. Apparently, the version of the mod I'm using in this video today is already outdated, and the creator is working on a newer, better version of this mod. The version I've used in this video only works if the game is running on OpenVR runtime or Steam VR runtime. If you have an Oculus headset like I do, then most games will try to push straight into the Oculus runtime. And if you want the mod to work, you need to find a way to stop 
the game from running in the Oculus runtime. You need to push it into Steam VR. Now there are a few things you can do, but it isn't always successful. Some games will come up and say, do you want to run in Steam VR or Oculus VR? But not every game has that option. The new version that the creator is working on will also work with the Oculus runtime. And I do believe it is available. An early version of it is available now, but I haven't had a chance to test it. But for now, let's just have a look at the performance difference of this particular version of this FSR modification. Let's start with Green Hell VR. Now, one thing I didn't say in the intro is I've been using the same graphics preset on all of these games, whether I'm using FSR on or FSR off. So on the left of the screen, you're seeing the game running with the mod and on the right of the screen, the mod has been removed, but the graphics presets are the exact same. The settings are the exact same. Now you can immediately see that the recording on the right without the FSR mod is struggling a little bit. There's some hang, there's some slowdown when the character turns. There's a soft kind of focus. Now here I wanted to pause because you can see just how much sharper the FSR version is on the left. Look at that, it's crazy. Now back into motion. Now as I was saying, there is a little bit of soft focus going on on the version on the right without FSR. You can really tell that the PC is kind of struggling to capture it. There's some frame drops. It's nowhere near as smooth. The actual experience of playing this in the headset and seeing the difference in the headset is even greater than watching it on a flat screen like this. Now immediately for me, just watching this back now, it's, it's night and day. Just how sharp, how crisp, how defined everything is on the left with the mod running, and then how blurry, I guess, and almost stuttery everything is on the right, it's incredible. This is a game changer for VR players who don't have the most powerful PCs known to man. Next up, we have Blair Witch. Now, this one isn't as immediately obvious. The sharpening is noticeable here at the start. You can see a little bit further into the woods. It does look a little bit more defined, but the smoothness doesn't become apparent until a little bit later in this clip. Now, some games are immediately noticeable, and as I say, the experience inside the headset is exceptionally noticeable, but seeing it playing back on a screen, it's harder to see and point out the differences. Now, if we let this bit play out, I'm going to muck around with these boxes, you'll start to really see the one on the left with the FSR on come into its own, and the one on the right is a lot more choppy. You can see some choppiness there, really, really choppy as I start running around this area. Whereas the one on the left retains the smoothness far better, far, far better. And we'll just finish with another freeze frame. Again, this one's not quite as obvious as Green Hell VR, but you can see far more clarity on the image on the left with FSR on. Time for an absolute classic now, Skyrim VR. Now this version of Skyrim VR has about 30 mods running on it. It's not the most heavily modded version, but it does have some mods running. Now take a little look at that screenshot on the left. The clarity, the sharpness, it's absolutely fantastic. And that's all coming from the FSR mod. Now as I say, the graphics presets and the mods are exactly the same on the left as they are on the right. Skyrim VR is fairly guilty of having a soft focus. A lot of the time, if you just play Skyrim VR vanilla, everything looks a little bit blurry, everything looks a little bit out of focus. There are actually mods for sharpening it, but this mod does that. And on top of that, it makes the game even smoother. Now, this is something you have to feel inside the headset. When you're in here, the smooth turning, the jumping, moving through the world, this mod does wonders for Skyrim VR. And it's actually the first game I tried with the mod on and it blew me away immediately, just how smooth it is. Again, you can often see it on playback when the characters turn. The turning on the right hand side of the screen in all of these games, you can kind of see a bit of a drag, a little bit of a blur, a little bit of a ghosting almost, but there's none of that on the left with the FSR mod applied. Now I did also want to check out a slightly busier area. It's a real shame I didn't get the exact same weather. Um, it's a little bit gloomier on the right, so that kind of affects the comparison here. But trust me when I say White Run, with all this sharpening and the smoother performance, the smoother turning, FSR on, it's just, it's wonderful. 
Ah, uh, sorry, I'm just picking up this child. A little bit weird. Uh, the one on the left is undoubtedly running far nicer, far smoother. And the one on the right still has that kind of soft, blurry graininess to it. That's all eradicated on the left with the FSR mod applied. This thing's doing wonders for the performance of my games. I don't know why I flew into the air then. That was a little bit mad. Okay, this is the last successful experiment we're going to look at today. The last game that I think worked flawlessly. But it is a little bit more subtle than the other games we've looked at. This is Boneworks. Now, I'm going to bring up quite a few freeze frames here to showcase what this is doing. Now, this is the first one. You can really see the details on the floor and the lines around the couch and the text on the poster much more clear, much more crisp with FSR on. Then again, when I pick up the monkey, the details on the monkey's face on the left with FSR on a lot more defined. You can really see each individual like paw, whereas on the right, it's a lot softer. It's all about the details, all about that sharpening. You can see it again when we go out into the corridor in just a moment. I hit this little button here, boop, and I go through. Now, this corridor here, again, on the left, just looks a lot more crisp, looks a lot sharper. Whereas on the right, you've got a little bit of blurring going on. Now, it might be a personal preference thing. Some people might prefer that slightly soft focus blur on the right without the FSR applied. But what I'm seeing inside the headset is a marked improvement in performance as well. Everything feels smoother with the mod applied. That's the hardest thing to showcase in these videos, but the feeling of being in there is crazy. All right, last one now, and I've only left this one in because I find it kind of funny. So I tried to apply the FSR mod to the Resident Evil Village Prey Dog VR mod. I thought it had worked. When I was in there playing it, it certainly felt far smoother, especially turning and running when I had the FSR mod applied. But I've come away now, and I've watched this footage back multiple times, and they look absolutely identical. I also checked the FSR mod log afterwards and it didn't seem to initialize correctly. So I don't believe the FSR mod works with the Resident Evil Village mods. But something in my mind convinced me it was working. I still feel like the one on the left maybe looks slightly smoother. I don't know. I really don't know. It probably is a placebo effect. But when I was in there, the one on the left with FSR applied felt like it was running smoother for me. There's certainly no sharpening happening. The sharpening isn't going on here. Uh, both images look the same in terms of quality. Visual quality is the same. Sharpness is the same. The blur is the same. But it did feel like that one on the left with FSR applied was running smoother. I did nothing else to the graphics. But according to the log, it didn't initialize. It must be a placebo effect, right? Right? Either way, I'm going to keep trying to get this mod to work with this because I think it could be huge for improving the performance of these mods because the Resi mods are quite tough to run and if we can improve it even just a little bit, that'll be absolutely fantastic. So, you've seen some gameplay, you've heard my thoughts after the first 12 hours of using this mod, and now you want to download it yourself. I wanted to include a very quick, brief overview of exactly how to do that at the end of this video, because although I think it's quite simple, this mod is definitely something that will appeal to people who like to tinker. It sadly isn't one size fits all. Some games are very easy to apply the mod to. Other games, not so much. And I have encountered several games that simply don't work. Hitman 3, for example, I cannot get to work with this mod. I am going to keep trying, but right now I can't get it to work. And that is a shame because that's one game that would really benefit from some sharpening. So let's just go straight to basics. Once you've clicked on the link in the description to this video, you'll be able to download a zip file from GitHub. Once you've downloaded the zip file for this mod, you need to unzip it using 7-zip or WinZip, whatever it is you use. Then you'll be left with a folder. Inside that folder, there will be two files. One file will be called openvr underscore api dot dll. The other file will be called openvr underscore mod. Now, basically what we need to do is we need to drop these two files into the installation location for the VR game, the Steam VR game that you want to apply the mod to. It's pretty simple. However, those two files need to go into a specific location and it isn't the same for every single game. Now we're using Skyrim here because I think Skyrim is probably one of the easiest ones I've come across so far because the file we need to replace 
is sitting in a really obvious location. So, to install this mod to Skyrim, let's say, we've opened up Skyrim's installation location. Now, if you don't know how to find that, you can go to Steam, go to your library, right click, go to manage, go to browse local files, and that will open up the installation folder. And that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing here. Now, in Skyrim VR's installation folder, there is already an openVR underscore API dot DLL file, and we need to replace that. So what you do is you rename the original one, the one that's already sitting in that folder. You rename it to openVR underscore API dot Ridge for original dot DLL. Now that means the original openVR underscore API is still there. If you ever need to bring it back or revert back to it, you can because it's there. You just need to change the name back to the original name. But for now, you've changed it to openVR underscore API dot Ridge dot DLL. Once you've done that, you can copy these two files the openVR underscore mod and openVR underscore API dot DLL from the mod you've downloaded folder into this folder, into the installation location for the VR game you want to run with the mod. It really is that simple. Basically, all you're doing is you're replacing the existing original openVR API with the one you've just downloaded. You're applying that new API to the game you want to run with the mod and you're keeping the old one by renaming it. So you're not overriding the file. The old one's still there, it's just got a new name. You're just adding the new one in and telling the game to run with that instead of with the original one. Then once you've done that, you can open the openVR underscore mod configuration file and set some presets. Now this is basically just telling the mod how sharp you want it to make the game. You can apply more or less sharpening to the games and you can change the render scale. Now I've left it on its default settings. So what you're seeing right now is the default settings. So for example here, the mod is running the game at a render scale of 0.77% of whatever I have Steam VR's resolution set to. So Steam VR's resolution set to 2000 by 2000, it's going to render the game at 0.77% of that and then use the FSR to upscale it. So if you want performance, you can go all the way down to 50% of that render resolution, balanced 59%, quality 67%, or ultra quality 77. And that's what I'm running things on. So that's what I'm showing you gameplay of today. You can also change the sharpness. The sharpness by default is set to 0.9, but you can drop it if you don't like it looking that sharp. And then there are some more things you can change here. You can set some hotkeys to increase sharpness when you're inside the game, decrease sharpness when you're inside the game. This is basically just how you change the presets of the mod itself. Tinker with this as much as you like, or leave it on default. I've basically left this on default for everything. So that's basically it. It is quite simple, but this definitely is a mod for tinkerers because certain games aren't going to make it easy for you to find this openVR underscore API file to replace with the one you've downloaded from the mod. And even if you do find it, there's no guarantees that it's always going to work, like in the case with Hitman 3, where it just wouldn't work even though I have replaced it. And then you have a third problem, whereby if you're using an Oculus headset, sometimes it's just going to boot into the Oculus runtime and you need to find a way to force the game to boot into Steam VR or OpenVR rather than Oculus if you want to use the mod and you want to see that benefit. I just wanted to highlight this today. This won't be the last video I make about it. I am going to try the new version as well, which works with Oculus runtime, but I wanted to kind of get this out there and show you what's possible because this has given me some huge performance increases and I know there will be people out there who want to play games like Green Hell and have struggled or who just want to squeeze a little bit of extra clarity and smoothness out of things like Skyrim or Boneworks or Blair Witch or whatever it is you want to play. Come and check this mod out. It isn't going to be for everyone. You have to have a tinkerer's mindset and be ready to throw it in and see if it works and then change things and test it. I'm still in the testing phase, but I will come back and cover this more once I've kind of had a bit more time to figure out the best ways to use it. But I wanted to make this video today because I'm very impressed at a very early stage. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment and hit subscribe and I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care guys. See you later.